so many crop farms. And Andrew Zulumis is reluctant to put them into Sabah for now because people are living right up against the lake, but eventually it'll happen. Mm -hmm. Guys, that's it. Thanks very much again, Zander. Well done. <laughs> Ethel, this better be good, boy. There was a huge influx coming in here. <laughs> this is Ethel Mashanti's talking about blue swallows, its species and crosses. I just played them well. <laughs> <laughs> right, afternoon. Blue swallows. I'm just going to give you a bit of a background to, to blue swallows, that they, they're critically endangered in South Africa, and they're threatened by destruction, degradation, and fragmentation of their habitat, and also quite likely threatened by genetics as well because it's such a small population. KZN is the stronghold for blue swallows in South Africa and in KZN they have a very narrow habitat preference for undulating moist mistbell grassland. Now this mistbell grassland is endemic to KZN and there's only about 0.3% or something left under formal conservation and about 94-95% has been irreversibly transformed. Over 90% of the blue swallows occur on private land and there are only two populations that are formally protected in KZN, in fact in South Africa, and that's in Pendley, one of ours, and Roseland's Nature Reserve, which is a private property under the stewardship program. They're endemic to sub-Saharan Africa and they're intra-African migrants. In South Africa they occur in KZN and in Pumalanga recently extinct in Limpopo province, and then they occur in the rest of those countries. And they mainly breed in the KZN Midlands. I think they've stopped breeding in Pumalanga about 2008, and they breed in Swaziland, Zim, Zambia, and Malawi. So in South Africa, it really is down to KZN. I developed a blue swallow monitoring plan for KZN to try and standardize the monitoring and, and data management. And I've just selected out the, the objectives for this talk. The medium term objective is to increase the population to 80 active nests with a fledging success rate of about two per breeding event per year. However, this implies that there's enough suitable habitat left for this to happen. And then monitoring, it will be number of active nests, eggs, number hatched and number of chicks fledged. The key performance indicators is that we hope to have an increase in the blue swallow and number of blue swallow active nest sites, chicks fledged, and birds returning to properties, and that's quite a tough one because we have absolutely no idea what's happening to our birds once they head back to East Africa. And then try and get an increase in number of properties with blue swallows, and this will also involve <coughs> us assessing potential sites that we haven't been to before. In 2011-2012, there was comprehensive monitoring from late September, well, from the end of September to the end of March. We had a full-time monitor that covered the private land, and all known sites were visited to see if uh, swallows were present. And if they were, then the focus for the rest of the monitoring season was on those sites to which the, the swallows had returned. In Pendland Nature Reserve, the staff there did a great job monitoring all the known active nests, and they did this on a weekly basis, and a great job they did. And then data was collected on whether or not the nest was active, right through to number of breeding attempts at each active nest site. Results for 2011-2012, 34 properties were visited, and this included in Pendley Nature Reserve and, and Blintwater Nature Reserve, where they went extinct a few years ago. And on 23 of those properties, swallows were present, and we had 32 active nests that produced 108 eggs, 81 chicks, and 80 fledglings. The two top producers, as seen there, of fledglings in Kazan was Roseland's Nature Reserve with 11, and in Pendle with 10, and that's probably the poorest performance I've known at Pendle Nature Reserve. Now, these results must be seen in the context of previous uh, year's results, and I gleaned data from some of our files and from a few EWT reports and what have you. Number of active nests in KZN, you can see the downward trend. A nest was deemed to be active if it had been lined with fresh mud and grass or uh, feathers. And I did away with the results for 2010, 2011 because there was insufficient sampling effort there. It was a very bad season from a counting point of view. Number of eggs laid. A few things I found quite interesting to show how the productivity can vary was that in like, for example, in 
2007-8, there were 31 active nests that gave rise to 129 eggs, whereas in 2011-2012 there were 32 active nests that only produced 108 eggs. And then somewhere like 2006 and 7, 26 active nests produced the same number of eggs as the 32 active nests in 2011-2012. So quite a bit of variation there. Chicks hatched in 2011-2012, only 75% of the eggs hatched, which is about the third lowest over those 11 seasons. And once again, you can see the, the downward trend there, and the only season to be below 70% hatching rate was 2009 and 10, which I think had about 59% hatching rate. Number of fledglings, 2011-2012, 99% of the chicks fledged, which is quite by far the best over those 11 seasons, but still we got a downward trend there, and again 2009-10 was a bad season with only about a 41% fledging rate. I think there were four seasons where the fledging rate was between 70 and 80 percent and the remaining seven were or six were over 80 percent so not too bad. Then separating out the the data for Impendlia Nature Reserve because it's one of ours and uh, at Impendlia it showed the same downward trend for number of eggs, chicks and fledglings but <coughs> an upward trend for number of active nests and a nest, uh, not, all, not all active nests resulted in egg laying, but most of them did. And I think that's it for that one. Number of breeding attempts, much the same, Adam Pendley, with this upward trend. And with the upward trend in number of active nests and number of breeding attempts, there's a need to try and translate this into an increase in the number of eggs laid and hatched. There were four sites, nest sites at uh, Impende that were particularly productive. And nest site number two was the most productive and it produced 38 fledglings since 2003-2004. It was also the only nest site in Impende that had three clutches in a season and it did this twice, which is really quite phenomenal. In 2004-2005, the three clutches gave a total of nine eggs and that led to six fledglings. And in 2006-2007, the three clutches produced a total of eight eggs and seven fledglings. But of concern was 2011-2012, where there was absolutely no activity at this nest site whatsoever. And in fact, it was the same at the other three productive sites, no activity in 2011 and 12. And two of those three sites in 2010-2011 were also inactive, so something's going wrong there and the holes still appear to be quite suitable. Now the effect of poor weather has been, on, on all aspects of blue solo breeding, has been shown to have a, a negative influence. When you get extended <coughs> periods of, of mist and drizzle, this can lead to starvation or nest abandonment because the birds can't see to fly and forage for insects. And in addition, no aerial insects are around in that sort of weather, and the blue swallows do rely on small aerial insects. In periods of heavy rain, it has been known for the odd nest to fall off the wall of a nest hole. And this can result in loss of eggs and chicks. And then the 2011-2012 season started off very slowly with extended periods of mist and rain from October to about late November, early December. But the weather in the Midlands actually varied quite a bit and there were some areas that were very dry. And it's quite possible that, uh, that this dry where they also resulted in, in a slow start in those areas. It's also likely that the intensity of monitoring on private land over the previous seasons varied quite a bit because there were a number of different monitors involved and there appeared to be no standard approach. But in 2011-2012, we employed a full-time monitor and we followed the monitoring plan. <coughs> and that worked extremely well. A potential area of inaccuracy is the, the fledgling category because it's virtually impossible to be at each nest site when the fledglings make their first flight off the nest and the monitor has to rely on either seeing the fledglings flying around near the nest hole or in the vicinity and failing that the monitor has to assume that if the chicks were fully feathered and nearly ready to go when the monitor was last there that the empty nest 
at the next visit indicated a successful fledging. Impendia Nature Reserve has always been a very productive blue swallow site and uh, was also one of the top producers in the country. Average hatching rate of 87%, which is better than the provincial average of 80, and an, a very good average fledging rate of 95%, which is quite a lot better than the provincial average. So with this good fledging rate, theoretically, the population could be boosted quite a bit if there could be an increase in the number of eggs laid and hatched. So what do we do at Impendia? Do we dig more holes? Probably not because there doesn't appear to be a shortage of natural holes and maybe it just comes down to us making sure that the holes there are kept in a good condition with uh, <clears throat> removing any vegetation that's falling over them, etc. And this will apply to the holes that are currently used as well as to potential holes. Now an interesting observation at Appendle, and I've seen this on a couple of private properties as well, is that the over overall population doesn't appear to increase from year to year, no matter how many chicks fledged the previous season. So for example, the season might start off with 12 birds arriving in a pendle, and in one year they had 24 fledglings, which is exceptional. But at the start of the next season, we're back to 12 birds again. So we've got no idea what's happening to those extra birds. So yes, blue swallow is a species in crisis, and all the figures show that the blue swallow population for KZN and in pendle is very low and the trend for almost all the breeding categories is down, suggesting that the survival of blue swallow into the future is tenuous. Thanks. Thanks, Ethel, and in good time, plenty of time for questions. Five minutes, anyone?